All right, good evening. Welcome to the PM edition for February 15, and it's, uh, two, what, so what time is it? 10.30. All right, it's 10.30. All right, so let's get to it. Let's be fast tonight. We got uh, Bitcoin in the top position at 48.9. We've been taking some runs at 50. We'll take a look at that in a second. Um, Ethereum at 1.7, pretty much 1.8 right there. Um, looking to get a new all-time high right there, maybe two. Car uh, Tether in the third spot, Cardano at 0.87, up 13% in 24 hours. Jesus, guys, it's great. XRP, 0.36, up 5%, despite, despite being in the gun sites of the federal government at the moment. Polkadot, uh, spot number six at, what, just under 13% just now. Uh, Binance is in the number seven spot at just under four percent. Litecoin nine and a half percent up at two hundred and thirteen dollars, pushing all time highs right now. Pretty cool. Bitcoin Cash. Oh, past Chainlink. Chainlink fell to tenth. Bitcoin Cash at seven hundred fifteen bucks. Uh ten percent up in the last twenty four hours. Chainlink only up five percent. Wow, why is Chainlink lagging behind the the bull the bull run? Alright, let's take a look at what's going on in the the fastest movers in the last twenty-four. Kasuma. Let's take a look at that one. That's another thing we used to do on the show and I forgot about it this morning. Because you always take a look at one coin. Cosmos. That's how you like learn about the new ones and stuff is on this side usually. Cosmos, let's see. Up forty one percent. What's this one up? Forty two percent? Okay. Digibyte up thirty six percent. Good for Digibyte. That's one of the old school coins hanging around, hanging in there. Icon at 32%. Ren at 31. Iota 33. Horizon. I'm probably done reading these now. That's a cool one. I haven't looked at that one either. Kasuma. Let's read about Kasuma. Uh, not about the price, but Polkadot's Wild Cousin. I don't know much about Polkadot either. We better read about that tomorrow or something is an experimental blockchain platform designed to provide a massively interoperable and scalable framework for developers on a substate. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Who are the founders? Same team on Polkadot. Interesting. Well, I'm wondering why they have two projects. Interesting. All right. Predominantly for developers. Well, we better read about Polkadot and see how that is different, I suppose. But we're done with that for now. So when we checked in this morning, we were looking at Bitcoin uh, approaching the cloud. We said we had pretty good support. We are just about right here at that time of the recording. Um, as you can see, that support lasted pretty much all day. It got a little thinner, and eventually we fell through. <clears throat> and you can see where we're at right now. But um, what's the actual info there? Just a 2% rise in 15 hours since I saw you guys. And let's see. Yeah, we broke through. It thinned out a ton. It came right back up through that. And it, the simple cloud looks like it wants to bounce. Look how close. What time was that? Did we get over 50 or not? Let's get real close and see what happened. It looks like not quite. Huh. <laughs> yeah, it looks like not quite. That's awesome. Well, soon enough. Um, that's a pretty strong indie. It's a pretty strong looking cloud. Let's take a look. <clears throat> that's awful similar to this morning. Uh, we're seeing the conversion. I think we're seeing the conversion line point just a little bit down. The baseline point just a hair up. And the lagging indicator is pretty darn flat, so they're all kind of disagreeing with each other just a little bit. Um, but the cloud itself is is decently thin. <coughs> I mean, we're squished right up against 50. I don't know. I mean, it could push down. It could push down, but I really don't think it's going to go far before it tries to bounce through 50 again. Um, I, if I had to bet 50-50, I'd be like. We'll be on this side of the line tomorrow when I see you guys. Alright, let's look at some other stuff. Bollinger is coiling up. 
So yeah, as it moves, Boilinger gets wide, and then it calms down, and Boilinger tightens up, and I don't know. This kind of looks like a little bit of sideways movement for at least a little bit longer, but not long. I mean, I'm on a five-minute time scale, so this is all like sensitive stuff. It changes quickly. With the EMAs, see, this morning we were looking at EMAs that were kind of like crisscrossing, like this lighter line was crisscrossing stuff. Uh, it does that a couple times as we break. These are the same places where we're breaking through the cloud. Sort of. Like, sort of, kind of. I could probably synchronize these two graphs to look better if I, if I knew how. I could get the values to be more, I don't know, match better. But that's the general idea. When we see over here that, like, these guys are more lined up, from what I understand, this orientation is ready to break through better, and if they're aiming upward, then that's when they're really ready to go. So, I think... <coughs> Not that this is any financial advice, this is obviously amateur stuff on the internet, but I sort of think between these two it looks decently ready to push through there, like, tomorrow. I mean, just knowing Bitcoin and the way that people behave about it. Once it breaks through 50 and goes to 51, you know, then it will just spike again, because people are like, oh shit, maybe this is the new bottom. And maybe it is. I don't know about that part, but cool. Um, yeah, you should probably save. Okay. Alright. Celsius paid 250 million in rewards. So I think that's like the lenders into this lending program got paid those rewards in interest, which is pretty interesting. I use Nexo, which I think is pretty similar. Um, I don't know how much, but, um, like how much Nexo did, but that's actually, you know, Probably something kind of similar. But yeah. The figure appears to have tripled based on the press release. 40 crypto assets. Oh, that's more than Nexo. Yeah. Cool. I didn't go through today and like, or this evening and highlight what I did earlier. So, Verge Coin. I don't know much about it. Um, but I guess the uh, fans of this coin aren't deterred, even though it's. Going through a third major hack. I didn't really know that it was like, I don't know why the very first thing about it is talking about Pornhub. It's like, doesn't Pornhub take like 10 coins? You don't refer to Dogecoin as like, oh, you know, the one that Pornhub takes, even though it takes Dogecoin. <laughs> I don't know. Just weird. It's a weird thing to say right off the bat. Um, anyway, uh, 108 by market cap. Uh, two and a half cents or so up in the day. Where was it before it got hacked? About two and a half pennies, and what's that? That's really not even a huge loss, especially if you're announcing a hack. Um. Yeah, interesting. A malicious element tried to take over the blockchain. A massive fifty. Two hundred days. That is brutal. Hmm. 200 days worth of transactions were incorrect. Hmm. GPU mineable coins are inherently insecure. I mean, <clears throat> I need to learn more about it, but I don't really know why proof of stake is inherently secure against that exact same problem. So, worth looking into for old Todd. Okay. Oh, I think I just looked into what Vergecoin was because I was like, is that what is it? Why is it associated with Pornhub so much? And that page didn't explain it at all. Crypto exchange, um, beware of bogus brokers. Oh yeah, I wanted to read this one because like, nah, I wasn't gonna bother reading this one because like, all of the exchanges have this problem and all of the services have this problem to some extent or another, like, anything like my crypto trading bots, my portfolio bots, like. If you go to like their community servers or if you try to reach out to them on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, you'll have people come out of the woodwork who will put their lo who will put this company that you're reaching out to's logo as their username or sorry, their profile picture or whatever, right? Their username will be something like yeah, you know, like bit <laughs> bitmex like one, you know, helper123 or something, right? Like customer service 
Bitmex, one, two, three, whatever. And they'll come out of the woodwork and be like, oh yeah, no big deal, let me help you out. Man, I had a guy tell me like, okay, in order to get you like help, I'll need you to give me like six Ethereum and then like that'll set, be sent back to you <laughs> when it's all sorted out. So it was like, what? <laughs> and then they were like 200 bucks at the time, so six was still asking me for like 1200 bucks. <laughs> I was like, what? Why would you just need to hold on to 1200 of my dollars to help me with like a email problem, you know, with your website, like with your with your portfolio service? It was just a wild. And it's like, it's amazing to me that I'm like, that's, do some people actually send you fucking over a thousand dollars just because you say so? And your logo like matches the company, you know what I mean? Like that's, so look, if you're getting into crypto, I'm just going to end the storytelling there. Sorry to rant, but like, just... Here's the thing, dude, like, um, I don't know what website's like the easiest to show this on, but like, just log into any site, well, like this one, for example, I guess, um, man, this wouldn't have the kind of thing, but like, you gotta go into the site and find these kinds of buttons and go to like, help, go to help through the place, the actual dot com, don't take their help through Twitter, right, don't go looking to help from like, Binance through Binance's Twitter, or their Reddit, or, or their Discord, or whatever. Because the people that come out of the woodwork probably don't work there. <laughs> and the services that try to, like, use that for their customer service and don't invest in stuff that's actually built into their website and is, like, guaranteed to be actual customer service because it's actually built into their website and it's going through your email and all that kind of stuff. Those websites, like, why did you trust those with your currency anyway? right they're like oh we'll just forego the expense of actual secure chat and just use discord because that's <laughs> because that's mature, mature and professional right why would you trust them with the currency anyway yeah so just do your research on that stuff like test out that customer service before you load your thousands of dollars in and start testing stuff you know i've had good experience with certain things um I'll keep, I guess this video is done with the news, but I'll just say, like, Quidensity is the shit. Um, Coin Tracker, pretty good. Zen Ledger is actually coming out to be a little bit better. Exchanges, these are the ones I like. I don't like Coinbase's politics, and so I actually hate that they're even there. But these ones are the ones. I, oh, Gemini's missing. I need to put Gemini in here. Shout out. These are alright. Yeah, these are cool. Ether wallet's cool. A block wise is actually tight, so shout outs. Alright, good night. Sorry this is going a little long. But yeah, obviously. <laughs> Had a beer too and good night. <laughs>